Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me to be here in this uh, high-level uh, uh, event, to have the opportunity to contribute uh, with uh, the presentation of uh, the Motive project. Um, I would like to start just uh, by complementing some information about myself uh, from the roundtable. Actually, I'm not an economist, I'm not a transport planner, I'm not a transport engineer. Just to make things clear, I'm a computer scientist by uh, uh, education with an interest that was developed into cognitive science and more and more closer to the social sciences with my PhD. And actually the focus of my research interest in, is in the interplay between uh, uh, ICT and society, relationships between them, but not only how we can design technology for, uh, for a sustainable living. So exploring from the uh, micro level of the individual up to the uh, implications for, uh, for society. So that uh, brings to stage the idea of uh, the presentation uh, uh, valuing mobility and also the motive projects. Basically, the context is the transition uh, we are living towards uh, uh, not only smart cities, but I would say livable smart cities. What do we mean by these words that sometimes are just uh, uh, full of uh, uh, slogans? We can fill them with meanings, of course. And in this case, m the combination of uh, livable and, uh, and smart is to, to emphasize that we don't really want cities just to become smarter in technological sense, but also livable from the human and the social viewpoint. Then, of course, with a contribution to higher and broader uh, societal uh, goals, including uh, environmental sustainability, for instance. How do people uh, uh, get smart or act smart? Actually, time is our most precious resource. So we could see this transition as uh, empowering citizens to make a smart use of time, just for productivity or for broader uh, 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 objectives. In my talk, uh, it's, uh, uh, I would like to take the, the bigger picture, and I do not exclude the idea that, as the answer formula, it might be impossible to operationalize, or at, at the end, we might have to come to some kind of compromises. But actually, the uh, notion of worthwhile time instead of productive time reflects a little bit more uh, the um, uh, need for uh, holistic frameworks, for uh, uh, value of time or value of travel time uh, in general. And uh, <clears throat> bringing this further to the motivation, basically we can talk and maybe we can expand later in the discussion to focus more on what is not measured actually rather than what is measured. Of course, measures can be always improved and we can uh, factor in additional components. But sometimes shall we also question um, variables, elements, components that we are currently, currently not considering. And this is what I mean when we uh, 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 went to focus on what is not measured. In the end, we are talking about societies and the, the issue of uh, uh, social inclusion, fairness, I think that it should be also accounted in the discussions on uh, and models of value of travel time. Uh, Mogens uh, already talked about children that were not included in the, in the fundamentals. I, I observed, and this is just my traveler experience, that for instance in cars there have been also great technological and uh, normative uh, improvement to ensure the safety of children. But it is not the case in uh, public transport or, uh, or trains, for instance. While uh, comfort factors, entertainment and many other uh, aspects promoting uh, uh, their, uh, their enjoyment in trains is, uh, uh, is very advanced, I would say. So, and then to what extent we can really rely on the use of BTT for as a proxy to other uh, travel variables, other important ones? This is, uh, of course, an open question. In uh, the starting point of, uh, of the Motive project, basically, is not to take one of the current BTT uh, frameworks and try to gradually build on them, but rather to, to try to be open and critical, especially about some uh, VTT assumptions. We mentioned, uh, of course, whether uh, um, uh, time of business travelers should be more valuable than uh, uh, the time of uh, uh, leisure travelers, or maybe unemployed, or uh, other, uh, other categories of people. And then, uh, um, of course, the blurring boundaries between uh, private time and the working time 
to what extent can we really uh, embed them uh, in, uh, in, uh, in our calculations when we want to decide to use some personal time during a business trip or uh, to use weekends for working. And then uh, going to the issue of digital connectivity, is it really the case that we should imply always uh, um, a, a positive uh, higher productivity? There are also some negative impacts of, uh, of ICT at the cognitive level and the social level without mentioning some, uh, some at, at the societal level. For instance, it is common in the, just talking about the con cognitive aspects to have a higher multitasking, more interruptions, and these are really not good friends of, uh, of, uh, of human productivity. Are they accounted in, in the models? Then, of course, we could go on and talk to what extent people uh, schedule and plan their lives in terms of activities and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, meetings. Of course, um, in some cases and for some professions and for some types of activities, there are hard constraints. But there are also, in many other cases, softer constraints. And uh, the whole point is about trying to identify these assumptions and see how and uh, the feasibility of, of more uh, holistic uh, models for uh, VTT. So that's why the, the Motive project is actually an exploration, a very open exploration of these issues without the ambition of uh, bringing out uh, results that have a statistical significance, but rather to, to bring up some issues to the different expert communities to be further discussed, maybe to uh, promote it in a more in-depth studies in specific contexts and to identify associations between uh, uh, time use, mobility, activities, and different uh, uh, categories of, uh, of people. The project started about one year ago. Unfortunately, I, I do not have any data or results today to present. It's just a presentation of the overall uh, conceptual framework and ideas behind the project. But hopefully, there will be other possibilities to, to discuss more based on uh, some empirical uh, evidence that uh, uh, we will find out. So the approach is through a smartphone-based data collection, now becoming uh, uh, quite common. Uh, we would like to uncover especially the, the travel experience with uh, uh, through some self-reported uh, uh, data uh, complementing uh, um, the automatically collected uh, mobility data. Of course, there are some limits also to the uh, trip recognition, uh, uh, mode detection, so some human intervention to correct this will be needed and there are uh, quite complex issues about user engagement and various other aspects, especially when the population is so diverse. So it is not, uh, uh, it, it's in, in a way a very ambitious uh, uh, project, not without risks, of course, but if there would be some gains, I believe that would be very, very meaningful. Let me mention also the presence uh, of the smart mobility coach uh, that basically uh, implements uh, the quantified traveler uh, idea. This is not only to, to provide uh, like statistics and, uh, and, and figures, uh, like the mode split of a, of a person. It is uh, the idea behind is to promote self-awareness, learning, and the consciousness about mobility choices because it is believed to, <coughs> to improve uh, uh, everyday decisions and therefore enhance our uh, uh, use of uh, worthwhile time. Talking about some numbers and the uh, targets that we have with, the, with our uh, uh, data collection campaign, it will be a European-wide uh, uh, campaign uh, <coughs> to collect data uh, from at least 10 European countries uh, involving uh, different partners in the consortium. And um, the sample should be minimum from uh, 5,000 5, participants. As I said earlier, it is not to have uh, a statistically uh, relevant sample, but more to have a picture uh, uh, from a, a balanced sample. So to have a, a little bit an insight on the pensioners' uh, 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 use of travel time, on the, on the families, on uh, uh, different uh, categories of people living uh, in urban or non-urban uh, areas, and also trying to capture uh, the different uh, kind of uh, groups more focused on, uh, on cycling, for instance, car drivers or uh, mul multimodal uh, people, uh, this part Capturing in a balanced way all the transport modes in, in the campaign is quite challenging, but again, uh, with, the, uh, with, with the campaigns, we, we played, uh, we stressed the emphasis on how to, 
how to access this, uh, these communities. And uh, we will uh, also release an open data set on mobility and behavioral data at the end of the project to further stimulate research or this kind of approach to uh, value of travel time. A, a few words about the conceptual framework that is basically the, uh, now the, the starting point for our uh, um, second part of the project. We, um, we developed uh, the notion of a value proposition of mobility, VPM, as the subjective value embedded in individual mobility choices. So this uh, uh, is basically co-created value, not only uh, uh, perceived and experienced by the traveler, but in the context. It's continuously uh, reassessed and, uh, and evolving. It is basically uh, coming out of uh, an interplay between uh, uh, policy, implementation, deployment, and participation in the mobility systems. Of course, during our campaign, it will be uh, lasting only two weeks, so we will not be able to, to really assess uh, uh, travel experience over a longer period of time. But it is a... Uh, <coughs> There might be other uh, longitudinal studies, maybe more focused, that will provide uh, a bigger insight into this. I would like to emphasize uh, uh, that uh, the VPM includes the utilitarian dimension of travel, so what we uh, shortly say time and cost savings, reliability, but the focus of the Motive project is more on the hedonic and uh, eudaimonic uh, dimensions of value. Um, and I will uh, explain this a little bit uh, more through this picture here that uh, resembles the Maslow uh, scale of uh, hierarchy of needs, where at the bottom we have safety, time, cost, of course, reliability, all the uh, elements that uh, we, we talked earlier, summarized with the alpha, basically the productivity part. At the higher level, the hedonic uh, um, component of value comfort, that of course is also playing an important role in the productivity, but not only. We have uh, emotional comfort, physical comfort, but on the <coughs> higher part of the, of the pyramid, we have also the uh, eudaimonic value. So to say it short, uh, we might say that uh, this part is being, the objective is being uh, fulfilled, realizing uh, one's own potential. How the, the much traveling and the much uh, uh, many activities that we perform, to what extent they contribute? And can we somehow quantify this part of value in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in our uh, everyday activities. And we are only talking about the indivi individual dimension. Of course, there is then a component at the societal level, but it's not only the sum of all the values produced by individuals. There are also some trade-offs. And while comfort might be also regard regarded uh, as a kind of short-term value, when we go and talk about the eudaimonic uh, uh, dimension of value, this is long-term. And there is a one distinction that is important to, uh, to make. In, uh, in the project, we identified uh, 19 research hypotheses that basically cross all the dimensions of the value proposition of mobility. And the idea is to find out in the data some associations between uh, factors um, that can be social demographic factors, mobility uh, patterns, some activity, uh, uh, current, current act frequent activities, and, uh, and these dimensions. And in the self-reported data, we also capture some appreciation or dissatisfaction about, uh, about uh, travel. So some uh, implications for planners, even, uh, even if, I, as I said, I'm not a planner myself and we don't have any data and any evidence, so it's very easy to, to criticize this. We believe that uh, somehow transport planning should evolve to, to capture a more holistic uh, conceptualization of uh, value. And uh, the conceptualization and notion of worthwhile travel time seems particularly appropriate. How feasible are, uh, uh, is the integration of such holistic uh, approaches to the study of VTT? Well, I, I hope that I will find some uh, uh, hints in the discussions of today and tomorrow that I can also integrate in, uh, in our uh, project. And uh, <clears throat> I would really like to see in, uh, in the future, I don't know how near, that in addition to alpha, we can also complement this with the beta and gamma to somehow capture the uh, utilitarian, hedonic, and uh, eudaimonic dimensions of value. So maybe for higher productivity, maybe we, we might have uh, 
lower hedonic or eudaimonic uh, values, or maybe uh, increase all of them. The challenge for op op of operationalization remains, uh, but of course, small attempts like the one uh, from, uh, from our project to collect data and find out uh, uh, associations, meaningful ones, it's a, it's a first attempt to, to contribute to this uh, broad uh, topic. So some uh, final uh, uh, conclusions, some words. Uh, <clears throat> the worthy app that is uh, basically developed uh, within the project with, uh, um, to collect this data set will be released by the end of the year. <clears throat> it will be on, on the various app stores. So if your institution or your organization is also interested in participating, please contact me and uh, I, I would be happy to, to engage more countries and uh, more uh, institutes in the data collection. Uh, <clears throat> we, we aim not only at providing uh, uh, some uh, scientific uh, uh, results and a contribution to the academic discussion, but also specific policy and business recommendations, for instance, for uh, uh, connecting the autonomous driving, mobility as a service, and various future mobility schemes. I think that it's also through the perception and expectations of travelers and their uh, current and maybe projected future experience that we can derive some uh, useful uh, uh, indications. Our, uh, <coughs> our project, in a way, it's a, a little step or a kind of a, a way to implement uh, uh, from the grassroots, uh, at the grassroots level, this concept of uh, uh, livable smart cities with a kind of uh, open science uh, approach. So engaging uh, citizens in, uh, in this process. I thank you very much for, again for the invitation and uh, I'm uh, available for uh, discussion. Thank you.